Hello everyone and welcome to We the Revolution. So I picked up a new project faster than I thought, but I heard from Avis that it is a very interesting game, so I wanted to give it a try too. I have to say in advance that I'm not that historically educated that I know a lot about the French Revolution, so I hope that the game uh, shows you a little bit, maybe in advance before we start, um, about the real story, what's going on here. But I guess we have to find out first, so let's start. Father. I am here. You hear me? I gave you the best I could. Why did you disown me? I have your blood in my veins. How could you? Do I mean nothing to you? Why do you grieve for him? He was nothing. I am better than he was. People will follow in my footsteps. Father... So, I guess this is it. I guess we are at our place. I don't really know the right court terms, I just realized. Maybe we're going to learn them along. So, hello Raymond Devoyer. Remind me next time that I want to stop drinking this cloudy rot gut. Remind me before I drink it. We're disgracing Themis, huh? Is someone coming? Who is coming? Oh. Mathilde Fidel. This was bound to happen. Bernard Fidel, I told you. Papa, you said we would go. You promised, said Frederick Fidel. Papa had a lot of work. Yes, a lot of heavy glasses. You promised me. I can't anymore. I'm fed up with asking. Mama's angry because... Quiet. Today, your favorite son wanted to prove he was more honorable than his father, so he started a fight. A five-year-old boy, for God's sake. Our neighbors wanted you to explain that to them, but, well, you were fighting for justice at an inn. Damn you, you bloody drunk. Mother. Oh, I... Oh, is this a tutorial that we have to... Okay, that's interesting. So, drag and drop documents to manage the layout. Click to display their contents. Uh -huh, okay. React to the events. Ignoring them may have so may have severe consequences. Oh wait, I wanted to. Okay, re the notebook. Review detailed information about current events, actions, and characters. Consider the effects and decide the defendant's fate. Change the settings here. Okay. 
Review the current balance of power in Paris and your position therein. Oh, where are we? Oh no, there's nothing to do now. Intrigues are complex conflicts between you and another political player. A defeat may turn out to be disastrous for you. Influence points are the main currency in the game. Use them wisely. Okay. Pay close attention to the changes in your influence and relations with factions. Some of your decisions and changes in the world of the game may cause global modifiers to come into action. These factors affect relations, reputation, and influence. You can review them in the notebook. Uh -huh. Okay, that's interesting. Well, there's a lot depending on our verdict, I guess. So let's just read the case file. The judge Alexis Fidel. We have not expected this kind of behavior from your son, although apparently we should have. Innocent child's play turned into an assault on our children. The younger one, Antoine, now has a chipped front tooth. We hope that you will punish your child accordingly. Should the situation repeat itself, we will react more decisively. I am sure we can deal with a gambler and a drunkard, even if he is a judge. We will not let our children be hurt. Review charges and facts. This will make it easier for you to unlock questions for the defendant. Okay. Ah. Find the correct links to unlock questions for the defendant. Choose a line of inquiry and link it to the right category. While linking lines of inquiry and categories, you can make a limited number of mistakes. If you make too many mistakes, the whole system will become locked. Some cases may contain traps. Read through the files thoroughly to find the lines of inquiry that are irrelevant. Oh, so I guess those are our questions. Those are the questions already. Okay, so the victim is the injured and one, I guess. Okay, so I guess that was correct. Oh, okay, so I have to link this with this. The extenuating circumstance circumstances are the circumstances that would, I don't know, make it not that bad. So I suppose that it's, so I suppose it speaks for the accused, which is the child, that it was only child's play. I, I would suppose. So I guess that this is correct. Yes. So the course of events should have, should be like child's should be first child's play then fighting children Is that it? Um I have to sort those two as well. So I guess this belongs to the victim. Aha, so the possibility of repeating was um, a trap. So, gather information and influence the jury's attitude by questioning the defendant. I don't know, I think at this point I'm just going to ask all the questions because I guess they're all important at some point. So, let's start with how did you play turn into a fight. To ask questions, you have to first unlock them in the inquiry linking menu. Okay. Being in the jury's good graces allows you to find out which way they will sway after you have asked the question. So, how did your play turn into a fight? Let's start with that. Are we the same family? Is this my son? No. Our neighbors, Antoine and John, they were saying mean things about you. We were playing guards and they asked me to pretend to be a drunkard whom they would, you know. You were fighting both of them at once? I had to. What exactly were they saying? Are you too drunk to guess? Is this my son? Is this my brother? I don't understand anything. I thought he was the father. I'm the drunk one? Okay. I was not asking you. They were yelling that you are... Well, I told them that it's not true and they started calling me names. They called me a drunkard's son. Who started the fight? I can tell you who ended it. Um, I think it was me. I kicked the one on the left and then wanted to get the one on the right, but but they ended it. They knocked me to the ground and paid me back for hitting them. Did you really break Antoine's tooth? Frederick is just a child. I don't know. I don't think so. 
Did you hit him in the face? I think I kicked him, but not that hard. So if he just kicked him. What's this? Each action may require a different number of influence points and have a different chance of success. Consider them carefully. Your, addition, your, your addictions are no longer a secret. The fact that other children are bullying your son because of them is a minor problem. But who is spreading those rumors? It is likely to be one of their parents. They could have whispered into their children's ears whom they shouldn't play with and why. They might even have spiced the story up with a lie. But who will hear it next? So, now we have the choice to intimidate the parents. Let's talk eye to eye or ignore. I guess this is like this is a bit complicated because... You should ignore if people are gossiping about you, but if we really are, what if we really do have an alcohol problem? I guess the good thing, I guess the right um, symbol, the right thing to show our son, the right example for our son should be us talking eye to eye to the parents because that's what you should do. Each action, okay. I don't know, I guess intimidating doesn't, it doesn't put us into a good light, so... I think let's just talk eye to eye with them. Let's be reasonable here. So what's in my notebook here? Okay, I have some negative relations with factions mean negative consequences for you, e.g. the fervor in Paris rising. Reputation impacts everything in the world of the game. Factions, family relations, the audience's attitude, the fervor in the sections, and even the ability to persuade other characters. You have a set amount of influence points per day. In the future, you will be able to increase this limit. What's going on here? Oh, so now we can look who's who. So Mathilde is our wife. Born in Paris, she's never been outside the city. A woman seen by many as a perfect wife. She takes care of the household and the children and looks after her husband's elderly father. She doesn't show it outright, but she's determined to protect her children at all costs. They are, perhaps, more important to her than you. Hmm. That's good to know, I guess. So, oh, he's my son too. A slender and handsome young man, the weight of current developments in France slowly dawning on him, igniting a revolutionary zeal in his heart. He thinks that the revolutionary judges should only be appointed from the lower classes of society, because only such people can be considered unstained, untainted and able to work towards the common interest and not only their personal gain. His gullibility is more dangerous than Frederick's, as his actions can carry the same weight as an adult's. People who excel in manipulating young and weak-willed minds may take advantage of his alacrity. He is a fledgling yet talented fiddler. So what about Frederick? Naive and innocent, which is completely normal for a boy his age. He idolizes you and wants to be just like you. Even if he occasionally disobeys his mother, he carries out his father's will to the letter. His favorite toy is a wooden sword that he always carries at his side. In his imagination, he fights against villains just like his father does in real life. He likes to carve small wooden figurines. Aww. So it definitely was a good idea to talk to the parents instead of intimidating them because our son looks up to us. So who's Aldrich? Oh, he's our father. We don't know him yet, do we? Once a moderately well-off merchant, today a bitter old man left with nothing but feverish visions of impossible vengeance against the Renard family, who once deprived him of his dreams. For several years he was unable to adequately provide for his family, to give his children the same standard of living as they used to enjoy. Since you secured your new position at the court, your family was once again able to live a fairly acceptable life, and your father again began dreaming of returning to his former trade. However, Aldrich had grown too old and too tired to revive his long-lost career. Instead of enjoying the prestige and wealth of the Fidel family, he had to bear witness to the Renard family's rise to power. Okay, that's our dad, I guess. And Raymond Devoyer, so he's the one sitting in the front row. Oh, he's my mentor. A man who has lived long enough to fully realize that justice isn't always the right answer. In his line of work, in these troubled times, the only thing that matters is survival instinct. At times it must go against the interests of other people. A man with such a mindset knows that one must keep an open ear both in the parlors and in the back alleys. The blind Themis appears to him as a bedtime fable fit at best for novice law students. Perhaps he perceives too many shades of grey morality to remain an efficient judge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we have here? Those are the neighbor. Okay, so now we're at the prologue. And there's nothing here to do. So, what's this? 
Oh, okay. Punish them. Make the most important decision. Condemn the defendant or deem them not guilty. Sign the document to legitimize your verdict. Okay. So are we done? Is there nothing else to ask? No. So this is our mentor. Forgot his name already. This is our son. This is our other son. And this is our wife. She doesn't look too happy. Our son said that he kicked them. So how could the other child had a chip, get a chipped tooth if he if our son kicked him? I suppose he's not some Taekwondo prodigy that he kicked him in the face. Hmm. So wait, let's just read this one more time. Innocent child assault play turned into an assault on our children. Okay. The younger one, Antoine, now has a chipped front tooth. So actually, they just want to okay no we already did that so uh, actually in this case file they all they want punishment for our child because he chipped the he Antoine has a chipped front tooth now and they say it's because of the fight with our son but our son says that he doesn't think so that he chipped his front tooth he said that he admits to starting the fight but he says that he didn't chip his front tooth. And I guess the storyline here is that we have to find out if he chipped the tooth or not, which he didn't. So I think he's not guilty. Aha. Ah, it does it for ourselves. You did well. A man who has to a man has to defend the honor of his family no matter what. I guess our wife won't agree to that though. Maybe not. Those children are so small and they already know the truth. The father of my children is a lying drunk and a gambler. Bernard used to worship you, but, to, but he soon grew up. Now it is Frederick's turn to learn the truth that echoes in the streets. You don't like me at all, do you? He's no longer fearing your anger. He knows that your threats are empty. Frederick is only starting to learn the truth about his father from the streets. I was unaware that Mathilde had such a temper. Yeah, me too. I just met her. As was I. We will wait outside, as always. Perry. <laughs> Liberté! We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. We could not resist it. Whole families took to the streets. <laughs> Franz was never so happy. We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. Ooh, so this courtroom is a little bit more full. So, find out which verdict is, expect is expected by the factions and your close ones. Okay. So the revolutionaries want to set them want to set him free, and my family and the common folk want him in prison. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, Two pages of a case file, okay. So, one of the local merchants, Guy Denyo, went to the National Guard station near the halls. With a raised voice, he stated that the owner of a neighboring stall had purposely poured wood tar into his barrel of herrings. For this supposed crime, Denyo demanded a proper punishment. Soldiers went to the halls and established that the herrings did indeed taste awful. Since there was no evidence of the crime, they did not take any action. A few hours later, the guards returned to the halls. This time it was the formally accused Jean Courbi who called for them, and there was a plethora of evidence on sight. The clearest being Daniel himself, smashing his neighbor's stall with a long wooden pole in front of witnesses. Well, that's never good for him. So, what's the second page? 
I would like to report that citizen Corby does not pay the city for his stall. Furthermore, he openly criticizes the new rule when talking to his clients. Okay. Oh, wait. So this had another page. How do we switch the pages? <laughs> ah. Okay. So the furious merchant was shaking his fist and yelling, Where were you when the scoundrel stole my place near the entrance? The guards did not stop to ask for details, but just armed a vigorous merchant and put him in jail. While drawing up the report, one of the officers found an old denunciation that had been written by Denio two years ago. So this guy who's standing in front of us is Guy Denio, who accused another guy of putting something into his herring barrel, but the police didn't find anything. I'm gonna call him just the police instead of the guard. And then the other guy who was supposed, who was accused of sabotaging Guy Dignon called the guards as well because he himself smashed his, um, smashed his market stand. Okay, so apparently he had a grudge with him at first because he stole his... So... Okay, also the citizen Kurbi, which is the second guy, does not pay the city for his stall. Okay, furthermore he openly criticizes the new rule when talking to his clients. Okay, interesting. So then let's try to make our questions. <laughs> So, the counter-revolution, offender's personality, um, instrument of- so the instrument of the crime was definitely the wooden pole. The crime scene must be the stall next to the entrance. The offender's personality, I guess he's the offender in that case, so it must be the old denunciation that he wrote two years ago. And then the counter-revolutionary propaganda belongs to counter-revolution. Ta-da! We're done. So I guess we can question him now. Oh wait, so now we can... Ah, so that's the protocol. Okay, so there's nothing in here because we did nothing. What's the news here? Oh! Okay, so we tried to talk to the parents, I guess, and the father had a rare episode of foolishness when he decided to stand up to someone stronger, threatening him with a fist and showing his children they are safe by his side. He did not listen to your arguments. Furthermore, he gave a precise description of where you can shove them. Oh, how nice. So what effect did that have? Oh, it cost us reputation. So I don't know what will happen if we ignore this, but I don't want to hire thugs to intimidate that guy. I think I just want to turn the other cheek and ignore it. Because it won't push us into a better light if we just intimidate everyone into shutting up. They still think we're drunks and they still... Well, they will hate us even more. Oh wait, what do we have? Okay, I have minus two reputation because of those stupid parents. So, okay, so let's just ask this guy. Your name? Daniel, fresh fish since 1772. Didn't ask, is that your name? And a vandal since yesterday. I'm not proud of what I did, but enough is enough. Really? Like when six months ago you stole eight francs from my revenue? Oh, so he's the under guy. Some urchin took that from your pockets while you were... Silence! You shall not speak until question. Systematically opposing the opinion of the jury may lead to serious consequences. Okay, so let's ask him. So those questions all lead to locking or lead to more locking him up. I would say that this question rather insinuates that I don't know that he was, well, had a fight and all that. So I don't know. Let's just start with. We have found your denunciation of Citizen Kurbi. Why did you write it? He did it because I started selling sprats. Shut up already, Monsieur le Judge. 
I just wanted to help the city. Every stallholder pays for the place in the halls. Kruby should pay too. You liar and crook. Don't you remember hiding from the royal collector at the butcher's? Silence. I was trying to avoid royal taxes. You only started after the beginning of the revolution. Be quiet, both of you. Okay, so this is going more into the revolutionaries' hand. I don't know what this will do, but whatever. Citizen Corby, come closer. Oh, I'm questioning him now. Those questions are locked. No, do you really dispute the new order? It's slander made up by a man who trades old flounders. Is that a no? Of course it is. I'm a merchant, not a politician. So... A few hours passed between Citizen Daniel's visit at the station and your vandalism. Let's just ask. Um, a few hours passed between Citizen Daniel's visit at the station and your report of vandalism. What happened during those hours? What happened? He continually mocked my stinking herrings. Nothing much, only the usual trade. And all of a sudden, Guy Daniel reached for a pole and began to destroy your stall. He went wild like an animal. Citizen Corby, please stop making a fool out of me. So there's certainly some holes in here. It would appear that your conflict has continued for some time now. It all started when the scoundrel placed a stall where mine should be, next to the entrance. It wasn't your place, you took it after old Choquette. Silence, and you have not been able to reach an agreement ever since. Now that I think of it, I may have started even earlier. Jean once refused to pay for a red mullet taken by his wife. My whole family fell ill because of that rotten carcass. You should be happy I didn't. Must I repeat myself? Be quiet or you will both be in more trouble than you are already. Oh wow, I'm really clueless about this. What products does Citizen Corby sell? Fruit and vegetables. And you sell fish? Straight from... Ypor and Petit Dal. I see. Then why did one of you come to the halls with wood tar and the other with a wooden pole? Hmm. Citizen. I don't remember. That stick must have been lying near the stall. Corby, however, clearly planned his actions. Okay. Um. So I guess my verdict is either prison or acquittal. Should this be so hard already? <laughs> so... I guess I should have asked the guy why he would bring wood tar. Well, this may be not be that easy to judge. Justly. After all, because I don't know at the moment. So, it is true. So, the one on trial is definitely um, Daniel. He was caught trashing the other guy's store. I guess we never asked the other guy um, if he really pays. So no, I think he's guilty. This all just points to um, him trying to do bad publicity for for the other guy because he he tries to say that he criticizes the new rule and tries to make some problems for him there, and so he must so he's guilty. There was no evidence of the tar in there, so in his herrings, although they tasted horrible. He said that they, I don't know, that he sold a rotten fish carcass to his wife. So I suppose he was jealous of his stand in the market. And so he made up all those rumors about him not paying his fee and telling lies and spreading propaganda or something like that. So to get him out of the business so he could take his stall. There is no evidence for what he did to him, but there is evidence for what he did to him. So, <sighs> guilty. My family will love me for this, but I think I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do something to appease the revolutionary soon. It seems the part is the Parisians will have to start buying fish elsewhere. Citizen Daniel, I sentence you to prison for vandalism. Better warn the guards that they won't have an easy life. 
I do not believe the people will be happy with such a severe penalty. Really? Most of the people wanted this. The jury wanted this. I did what the jury wanted. I solved the case. After trial, click to move on to the next part. So where are we going to go now? Jacques-Louis David, may I remind you that you promised to join me. I have a feeling that tonight's moon favors gamblers. Though it does not favor spouses. God should grace us with wives who understand the importance of an evening game of dice. They should also know that the right amount of wine guarantees a lucky roller. I should go home. Bringing a judge to the game has benefits. Other players will surely not cheat. That is not a strong argument. My name is Jacques-Louis David. I am but a humble painter, not a silver-tongued judge. You are a sly politician, Jacques. Uh, Jacques. As a politician, I understand the importance of keeping promises. And you, my friend, are trying to get out of yours. I promised him to go with him. My family will hate me for this. Although I just did something for my family that they would like me again. So I guess I have a surplus of love in my family. That's nothing that exists. I suppose he's one of my friends. So if I made him a promise, I should keep my promise. I'm sure my wife won't understand though but i'll keep my promise all right but only for a short while <laughs> oh no she made dinner <laughs> I'm sorry, wife. <laughs> I made a promise. The moon favors gamblers. I'm sorry, wife. I'm sorry. Tomorrow night I will stay with you. What? You can berate me, as you always do. Frederick sometimes imagines you as a deep-sea sailor. He dreams that you visit distant countries, have wonderful adventures, and one day you'll return and tell us all about them. But all I see is a man in a lifeboat, and one of your oars is broken. A furious storm turns up huge waves that are fated to devour you, and I'm standing on the edge of a cliff, holding a makeshift lamp. Your children have already forgotten about you. They are far, far away. Your father died of old age. Your drinking companions now play cards with new friends. But not you. No. I'm still standing on a shore, hoping that your boat does not sink. That vision is not so distant either. Your sons are still young, but the storm has already begun. If you don't turn around now... Good night. Aww. Before the storm creates the highest wave, you'll have to bow before it. Alone. It will force you to become meek and nobody will be there to see it. Aww, she does kind of love us, right? Oh, wait. Okay. Oh. Okay, so f upon returning home, you can decide how you would like to spend the rest of the day. So, each action will affect the other members of the family as well as their attitude towards you. Each character's attitude can provide you with or deprive you of certain bonuses, e.g. reputation or relations with factions. Your youngest son is special. His attitude makes the other family members like you slightly more. Take good care of him. Oh. After various important events, you may find yourself with an action forced upon you. On this day, you become the victim of your own decisions. <clears throat> oh, okay, so today I chose gambling in the moonlight. And now I can't do any of those other stuffs. So, I guess there's nothing else I could do. So this is my father, those are the sons, and this is my wife. Okay, well then let's accept this, right? 
It's not really something... Yeah. So I have to. Why can't I accept it? Ah, now I can. So, this was day one of We the Revolution, of our new job as a judge. So, we are going to take a quick break. This has been a long episode already. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next episode and the next day at We the Revolution. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.